Hey, hi guys. Good evening. Good evening, Vinaya. Good evening, Cable. I think two of you have joined. Vinaya is here. Cable is here. Anybody else joining us? Mm, all right. Okay. Good evening. Let's get started. Good evening. Good evening. Let's get started. Uh, let me quickly give a background. Being meanwhile, let others also join in as a part of formality. Hello. Hello. I'm fine. I'm good. I'm good. So how's your health, Cable? Are you better now? Completely better. The other day you were not fine. All good now. Hi, Vanya. Is the audio clear? You are able to hear me out clearly. Okay, all clear. Good. All right. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, all right. So, all right. So, let me get started. So, meanwhile, others, those who want to join in, let them join in. Meanwhile, good evening, Shivani. Good evening. Good evening. Yeah, meanwhile, you guys pull out your book, pen, and then get ready. Let's get started. About a couple of minutes. Okay, all right. Who is this beast? Is this Kushagra? Joined as a beast. Okay, all right. So, I'm Belvi Srinivas, as you know. Okay. Ah, so, I worked in various capacities in the last. 14 years or so, that's since 2007. So, and here is the brief profile. So, during that period of time, yes, I did develop some expertise to train students in the areas of QA, DI, and TLR. That's primarily. And most of you know this. So, just in case you want to interface, so you can join into this Telegram group so that we'll be able to communicate better and you will not miss any notification or whatever the small communications that you want to have, small doubts you want to resolve over the Telegram group. All that can be used out here. So I will also be watching some of your doubts if something has to be rectified. I will also chip in and try to help wherever it is rectified, wherever it is required. Yeah. So as you all are aware, Unacademy offers these are the two kinds of program that Unacademy offers. One is the plus, the other one is the iconic. So plus is to do more with as you are all kind of aware. Plus is more to do with the structured courses. Iconic gives you one-to-one -one interactions. With the mentors of your choice you can set up the meetings and you can get that done i think only for today on the plus subscriptions there is some offer so six plus one month extra one month so if those who are looking for six month subscription might get one month free 18 month subscription two months free and four months free so that's that's the offer not with respect to the pricing pricing or say and as usual you get 10 percent discount on your our usual subscription prices in addition to that so all you have is a couple of months of uh, subscription time is what you are going to get free out there yes so most preferred for cat 21 students is the six months iconic subscription because you might need quite a bit of one-to-one -one interactions with some of the mentors whom you trust with whom you would like to be counseled with respect to various aspects so that would be the most preferred one right yeah so i keep reminding so two tests per week is mandatory and one being written on Sunday is a month, right? You've got to take two tests every particular week. That's only cat marks, two marks, out of which one should be written on Sunday. The other one is your choice. Preferably that can be written two days before Sunday or three days before Sunday. Something like that is what you can balance. Okay. So let's come back to the discussion. Let's start this. So in the, one of the lectures, this is what we kind of did. So let me try to lighten what is there. Yeah. I guess this is fine. Okay. Yes. So let me see. Yeah. Okay. So here we go. So in one of the lectures, I think the one, the part one of this particular lecture, we were exploring the thoughts of type one and type two. These were the two thoughts we kind of explored. Type one and type three is what we covered. Let's start with the type three today. Type three. And type 4 is pretty incidental with type 1 and type 2. Both are same. If you have done the type 1 and type 2, type 1 and type 2, it generally turns down to this particular structure automatically. So therefore, there is not too much of a difference out there. It is more or less similar. So therefore, we'll spend some time on type 3. If there is a time, then we will see if we can take some examples from type 4. Otherwise, type 3 being the focus, one of the very, very important concepts being asked in CAT, or CAT or ZAT or IFT, generally you might not find too many of such questions in exams like NMAT or SNAP, but definitely in these three exams, there were so many instances where these kind of questions were asked. Very simple, let's come to this. So if I want to partition this further, 
I will classify them into four types, right? So where here x square y square is common. So and again, I'm looking for positive integral solution, non-negative integral solutions, or integral solution. Three types of questions can be asked. You have to watch out for that in the exam. Sometimes they may ask positive integral solution. Sometimes the question may be worded as non-negative integral solution. At times it may be worded as integral solutions. Either of this, any of these three is kind of it could be it could be worded. Right. So from this, so you understand that n is odd. N is odd and perfect square. N is even. N is even and a perfect square. Four categorization. I will put them into four categories. Say, what are the four categories? One category is N is odd. Another category is N is odd and also a perfect square. Third one is N is even. So now fourth one is N is even and a perfect square. These three kind of questions. So we'll watch out for this N. I'm categorizing this N. This category of N into four parts. If anybody makes that study complete. Whenever the question comes, it becomes a level one question. We can technically answer most of the questions well within a minute. So that's all the time it takes. Once we are ready with this classification and we have a clear understanding of this particular classification, right? I'm not saying that this is the only form it comes. There are multiple forms, but this form everybody should have a control because this is most expected form in this shape. There may it may happen that no form has changed a little bit. A little bit we will be able to handle. That's when it becomes a level two kind of question. We'll see such questions as we go further into the course. Fair enough. Let me take a simple example to illustrate. Let me go into the scratch because one, two questions you've got to visualize. It'll never be 15 in the exam. This is going to be a large number. It'll be some three digit number or a four digit number. That's what you kind of see in the exam. But yeah, to start with, let me see a small one so that I can help you to visualize hey, what is happening out here. So once you visualize it, it becomes very easy to work with that particular question. Let's take a look at this. X square minus Y square is 15. Let me stick with the first one. Hey, how many positive integral solutions for this? Let's understand the nuts and bolts of the problem to start with. So I will show complete picture, but the next time onwards, we will not see the picture. We will hold on to the summary because the numbers are going to be three digit numbers and four digit numbers kind of, which I will not be able to simulate and show, right? So first time, couple of questions, look at the simulation and any clarity is required there through the simulation, we can learn. You will be able to visualize and ask me questions on this particular simulation because on the large number, I will not be able to see. All right, this particular question in a cat, it came it as x square minus y square is equal to 7,744. That I can't do a simulation. It will not make any sense to simulate that number and show how the nuts and bolts in that number look like, right? Okay, so let's take a look at this question. So first step is what? Hey, I am looking for positive integers. Means what? X is positive, y is positive. Everyone always write it as a product. Be it sum or difference, always write it as a product. Bottom line. What is the bottom line? If the sum or difference is given to us, simply convert this to the product. Always write it as the product. Sum or difference should be expressed as product. That is the first step. Where did we learn this? Everywhere we learned this. Every single question we learned this in the previous one. Not every single question of the previous one we learned this. We had something like a by x plus b by y is equal to 1 by c. This is what we kind of had in the previous lecture, right? A by x plus b by y is equal to 1 by c. Then what did we do on this? All right, no simple. All right, we wrote this as x minus ac, y minus bc is also equal to a, b, c square. What did I do? This was a number. A, b, c square was a number. What is x minus ac? This became a number like a. This is the number has become something like a b. A into b is equal to k. All right, a, b, c square was something like k. I express this particular number as a product of two numbers. Product of two or three does not matter. Bottom line, all of your teachers would have kind of set the bottom line while doing this, especially in the 11th standard. If you are doing this particular study, it comes in the 11th standard. Some or difference should be first thing is written as a product. That's a natural reaction. On this particular question, you don't have to worry about it. It becomes pretty natural reaction. Everybody and anybody would write this as x plus y. x minus y is equal to 50 x plus y and x minus y is equal to 15. You may say that, okay, one way of writing this, therefore a 15 should be written as product of two natural, product of two numbers, a y2 to y2 natural numbers, because x is positive, x and y are positive integers, sum of two natural numbers, when you wrote x plus y, right, when you wrote this x plus y, sum of two natural numbers is another natural number, difference of two natural numbers should become another natural number, therefore inherent condition, you also say that x should be greater than y. 
a y x should be greater than y because the difference of two natural numbers should become another natural number here the difference of two natural numbers should become another natural number and hence x should be greater than y and then so i'm writing it as x 15 into 1 is 15 that is one way of writing okay i can write it as 5 into 3 is equal to 15 let me write all possible ways 3 into 5 is 15 15 into 1 is 15 if i say positive integral solution only the first two would qualify the second two will disqualify the first two qualify the second two disqualify let's understand is it so let's understand by taking some equations here let me take the case one yeah what is that i'm trying to say in the case one x plus y is equal to 15 x minus y is equal to 1 okay so okay in the exam we'll not do all this you visualize this then we will write the summary it is a one minute question we will not write all these factors etc etc that's a waste of time but you got to visualize where it clicks where it fails right now where is it okay where it is not okay once you understand summarizing becomes easier okay yeah uh, so therefore you say that hey i solve this i will get 2x is equal to okay let me write x and y directly there 2x all that is not required we all know how to solve this that's not required there let me write therefore from here you say that hey man x is equal to 8 y is equal to 7 that is the point you are trying to say you are trying to say that if i come back to my x square minus y square is equal to 15 you are trying to say 8 square minus 7 square is equal to 15 that is the solution you are offering using the first equation okay what about the second one if i write from here what is the solution you are trying to offer x plus y is equal to 5 x minus y is equal to 3 Therefore, you are trying to say that after solving, you say that x is equal to 4 and y is equal to 1. You are trying to say that another solution to this is y 4 square minus 1 square is also 15. That is the second solution you are trying to offer to this equation. Fair enough. That also made sense. Let's say what is the third one? Why does it fail? All right, for positive integral solution, it fails. Why does this fail for the positive integral solution? Let's try that also. Let's try that also. You are trying to say that, okay, the third one, x plus, I'm writing on the top x plus y is equal to 3 then you are saying x minus y is equal to 5 from here you would say that hey x is equal to 4 x is equal to 4 no doubt but y is equal to minus 1 now you are trying to say y is equal to minus 1 perfect all right do you get the answer will, will i get the answer if i plug these numbers into x square y square of course yes but why i am not accepting this i am not accepting this why because y minus one i will not accept that is the only problem after solving this otherwise it's fine if the question was tell me integral solution i don't have a problem with this because it's, uh, it's offering me this solution x square minus y square is equal to 15. you are trying to say that x value is 4 4 square in place of y you are saying right minus one square answer is 15 correct equation is not failing this is okay but it fails to qualify as an answer for a simple reason that it has to be a positive integral solution whereas if it is an integral solution i have absolutely no problem with this right so i will it will, it will happily qualify into that particular range okay so therefore if you say positive integral solution then x should be greater than y simply because x plus y is positive and the x minus y should also be positive product of two positive integers has to be 15. therefore x minus y should be positive if x minus y should be positive x should be greater than y okay so what is the summary therefore you first figure out the factors so far is it clear friends everybody clear so far what qualified what disqualified is clear so far is this clear everybody clear so far any doubts so far because i'm going to erase some data here don't ask me after i erase ask me before i erase clear right good very good good very good very good so let me remove some in fact let me remove all the data yeah let me do all the data fair enough all right so let me let me put it to the perspective therefore what you are trying to say you look at this 15 now listen to me very very carefully right listen to me very carefully on this you look at this particular 15 find the factors of 15 right 15 is nothing but 3 power 1 into 5 power 1 5 power 1 find the factors of 15 it becomes the study of 15 very good so factors of 15 are 2 this one transpose to 2 two ways you can permute this two ways you can permute 5 also therefore it has four factors now out of these four factors out of these four factors there will be half of the factors where x would be greater than y there would be half of the factors where x would be less than y therefore there would be two which in which x will be greater than y and there will be two cases you have four cases basically you have four cases what were the four cases these are the four cases you wrote there x plus y and x minus y 
Okay, let me write it like that itself. X plus Y and X minus Y itself, let me write. Okay, anyway, these are the four factors out of which there will be four values in which X becomes greater than Y. For what values X was greater than Y? When you wrote 15 into 1, that is when for the factor, which means these two are nothing but 15. When you write 15, see these four factors, what are the four factors? 1 is a factor, 3 is a factor, 5 is a factor, 15 is a factor. These are the four factors. I'm saying that consider these two. When you write 15 here, it qualifies. When you write five here, it qualifies. When you write five here, it qualifies. Okay, what are the other two sides? In the cases in which X will be less than Y, when you write three here, it disqualifies. When you write one here, it disqualifies, which means you had written three into one and you would have written one into 15. Now, these are the factors which qualify for 15 and one X plus Y being 15 and one and one and three on the other side, it got disqualified in a sense. Simply put, hey, if I get four factors, X will be greater than Y half of the times. X will be less than Y half of the time. Simply, therefore, you say that if I want positive integral solutions, for x square plus y square is equal to odd, which case I am discussing, I am discussing x square plus y square is equal to odd. If this is odd, number of positive integral solution is nothing but factors. Let's say this number is n. n is an odd number. Factors of n divided by 2. Clear? This is clear. Factors of n divided by 2 is clear. Did you visualize this? For 15, you visualize this. This is clear. This is clear number of positive because this is what you have to remember as a summary because in the exam we are not going through all this study is done once the study is done you got to remember the summary of that study the whole idea is what we have to quickly summarize all these parameters that's the whole study whole study is the entire thing we got to summarize ultimately we have to summarize and remember the summary right okay now i will ask a question to you tell me how many integral solutions for this how many integral solutions for this how many integral solutions for this x square plus y square is equal to 15 can you tell me the number of integral solutions for this number of integral solutions for this find the number of integral solutions given x square minus y square is equal to 15. yeah set it up find the number of integral solutions integral solutions for this tell me the count that's enough just give me the count find the number of integral solutions that's enough find the number of integral solutions integral second portion portion b find the number of integral solutions good okay all right now listen all of you listen here let me show one simulation so that you kind of understand this listen to me everybody listen to me everybody listen to me yeah okay so anyway the first one let me simulate the first one let's understand this you did the first one case one we did understand this once once you understand you will gain that confidence to do it without much support okay first one we did in the first one you said that man x was 8 y was 7 all right x was 8 and y was 7 8 square minus 7 square was the number the first one was very clear to us okay and we did this uh, and let's let's try this 1 and 15 also let's try this so we will get some answer there what is the answer x plus y is equal to 1 x minus y is equal to 15 therefore you say that x is equal to 8 and y is equal to minus 7 that's also fine x is equal to 8 and here you are getting y is equal to minus 7 okay let me take the first case listen very very carefully on this let me take the first case itself listen very very carefully listen very very carefully on this because oh you got to understand this once so i will take the same first case i will write it like this you had 15 there i will write this as minus 15 and minus 1. okay okay now listen it was 15 and 1 i'm making it minus 15 and minus 1 will it work let's check x plus y is equal to minus 15 x minus y is equal to minus 1 let's solve this solid let's solve this therefore x is equal to minus 8 therefore y is equal to minus 7 will this work will this work of course it works beautifully well x square minus y square is equal to 15 therefore you are saying that minus 8 square 
minus of minus 7 square is also 15. Perfectly good. It works there. Then you said that towards the end, you said that a 1 into 15 was a solution. Can I make it minus 15 and minus 1? That also works beautifully well. If you say that x plus y is equal to minus 1 and x minus y is equal to minus 15, I'm just changing this, changing this to minus 15. From here, you say that x is equal to minus 8, whereas y is equal to 7. So that also works well. Minus 8 square minus of 7 square is also equal to 15. Hey, what is the point I'm trying to make? Just try and visualize this once. So when you wrote x square minus y square is equal to 15, under the positive integral solution, one of the values you had was, one of the values you had was 8 square minus 7 square, 8 square minus, okay, let me put the brackets here, 8 square minus 7 square is equal to 15. My point is, I can simulate this in another three ways. What are the another three ways? I can write it as minus 8 square minus of 7 square is also 15. Next way of simulation of this, I can write, keep this as minus 8 square and then minus of minus 7 square. That also gives me 15. I can simulate it in another one way that is 8 square minus of minus 7 square will also be equal to 15, which means hey, there is a plus or minus 8 which exists here. X can take plus or minus 8, Y can take plus or minus 7. Therefore, technically keeping this, what did what is that we are trying to study? Therefore, all I'm trying to say is, right, all I'm trying to say is this. Let's understand this. All I'm trying to say is you wrote them. These were the factors. 15 was a factor. 15 was a factor. 5 was a factor. The, of course, the other side was there. 5 was a factor. 3 was a factor. And 1 was a factor. What was the other side? You said that into 1. This side you wrote into 3, this side you write into 5, but this side you wrote all it into, into 15. Not required. All I'm trying to say is, hey, all these things with plus or minus signs will work. All these parameters with plus or minus side work. Hey, what are these? These are nothing but the factors. How many times of the factors? Therefore, two times of the factors because plus or minus 15, plus or minus 5, plus or minus 3, and plus or minus 1. For all these values, there is always a corresponding value on this side. Of course, you will be writing plus or minus 1, plus or minus 3, all this, but not required. Focus only on one side. You understand that this is nothing but two times of the factor. This becomes two twice the factor. That's what the study we are kind of looking at. So two things, number of positive integral solution, factors of the number divided by 2, Number of integral values of the solution, two times of the factors of the number. These two generalizations are clear. These two generalizations are clear when it is odd. When x square minus y square is equal to n, where n is an odd number, we did two generalization. Number of positive integral solutions are the factors of the number divided by 2. Number of integral solutions is two times of the factors of the number. Is this clear to you? Everybody clear? Still doubt there? Could you understand this? Those who are there from the beginning, did you connect with this? Basically, it is the factor study. Basically, it is the factor study. Technically, it is a factor study. Those who joined a little later, Pranjal, Sachki, Rahul, guys, did you also kind of follow? Okay. Because Kaval, Vanya, Rishav, Shivani were there little in the beginning. What about others? Others who those who joined a little later. Okay, you may have to go back. All right. If you didn't follow this, probably just go back to the video after this and then try and see if it is making sense. Okay, good. All right. So now that is the point here. That is the point here. So these two generalizations is what you got to remember. That's when the speed and momentum comes in the study. Otherwise, the speed and momentum may not come because it's a factor study. Ultimately, it has become a factor study. At the bottom of it, it looks like a factor study. Okay, now try and tell me the answer to this. Try and tell me the answer to this. X square minus Y square is equal to 24. Yeah, those who were there from the beginning, try and see the answer to this particular question. What could be the answer to this particular question? Tell me only to the first one. Number of positive integral solution. Only to the first one, you tell me the answer. Numerical answer. Okay, these many solutions exist for 24. How many solutions exist? Vanya should be able to tell, Rishav should be able to tell, Kaval should be able to tell. At least you should give a try. Right? You guys can give a try, Shivani. Yeah. Because you heard the full story. Okay. Mm. 
right okay yeah correct so that is the problem with half story you heard the full story but half a full story still it is half a full story now listen to me very very carefully listen to me i expected this mistake i expected this mistake because it is still half of the full story you heard the full story but part one right only the part one this has become even the dynamics will change the moment it has become even the dynamic will change i said that i classified them into four parts first two parts are very important what is that x square minus y square is equal to n where n is an odd we examined this so where x square minus y square is equal to n where n is even that is the second part of the story yeah let's understand the second part of the story listen very very carefully where we committed a mistake we will be able to understand x plus y and x minus y is equal to 24 where 24 is an even number fair enough so i can write this as 24 into 1 let me write let me write 24 into 1 i can also write this as 12 into 2 case 2 let me write few cases because i'm examining only positive side if i'm examining positive side x is greater than y if it x is greater than y naturally x minus y should be positive right here x minus y should be positive and hence i'm writing one there two there all x plus y should be greater than x minus y so 12 into 2 you can also write this as 6 into 4 okay 8 into 3 before this 8 into 3 6 into 4 now these are the four cases you consider let me take the first case let me take the first case hey, what is happening in the first case x plus y is equal to 24 hey, what is x minus y which is nothing but 1 let me resolve this hey, what is the value of x therefore 12.5 i am not interested if x is 12.5 why also i can find out that also will be another fraction there because together it is 24 out of 24 it is 12.5 therefore the other value is 11.5 but i am interested in integral values fine this is an answer 12.5 square minus 11.5 square is 24 correct but i am not interested in that answer i am interested in the positive integral solution 12.5 is not a positive integral solution fair enough okay so let's come to the second one therefore first one did not work let we said that it works but it did not work because you said that four cases in your mind these were the four cases these were the four cases right when you all said that the answer is four cases these were the four cases we were talking about right okay but the first case did not work let's go to the second case will this work let's check so you say that x plus y is equal to 12 and x minus y is equal to 2 this works therefore you are saying that x is equal to all x is equal to 7 and y is equal to 5 this works 7 square minus 5 square is 24 yes this part is working for us right this is working for us but the earlier one did not work for us what do you mean so listen to this where we fundamentally committed a mistake when we said understand the basic x square minus y square is an even number you said that it's an even number fair enough if it is an even number if x i'll tell you if the difference is even either both should be even even minus even is equal to even understand this very very carefully if i want the difference of two perfect squares to be even even minus even is equal to even in the sense x square is even if x square is even then x is even if y square is even then y is even that is case one hey, what is the second case the second case is x square can be odd odd minus y square also should be odd odd minus odd becomes even why my output is even if my output is even either both my input should be even even minus even can be even that is one case here even minus even can be even or odd minus odd can be even you can't say that one odd and one even becomes even no that's not possible both should be odd or both should be even okay if x square is odd then what about x x should be odd okay what about y then y also should be odd now come back to the inputting side okay, what is the inputting side x plus y into x minus y is what you had x plus y and x minus y is equal to even here x plus y and x minus y x square minus y square i can write it like this okay go from here let's examine from here if x is even you said that x is even and y is even then what is x plus y even what is x minus y even sum of two numbers is even difference of two even numbers is also even even into even has become another even number according to this case from here from this particular case fair enough that is done what about this what if i put x is equal to odd and y is equal to odd odd plus odd has become another even number odd minus odd has also become another even number so technically you are trying to say that look if i want an answer to this 24 x plus y should be an even number x minus y should also be an even number only product of two even numbers should become an even number now that is the reason it failed listen to this carefully now see here x plus y is an even number worked 
x minus y is an odd number therefore the did case did not work because what you are trying to say whether you consider the first case or you consider the second case this always remains even x plus y side is even x minus y side is also even both sides has to be even but what happened to us 24 was even but one was not even that's the reason it failed why did the second case work because x plus y was 12 this was even and this particular side is also even x minus y is also even therefore it worked and hence you said that x is equal to 7 and y is equal to 5 therefore it worked the third case it will not work hey why it will not work because x plus y is even but x minus y is odd it won't work will the fourth case work this case would work because x plus y is even and x minus y is also even fourth case would work right therefore 2 becomes the answer to this particular question not 4 2 would be the answer okay is this correction parameter clear so far is the correction clear but will we do all this we won't do all this how do we summarize it we'll complete later but did you visualize that yes both sides should be even that's where we faltered at least did we identify the mistake did we identify the mistake where the mistake is now how to quickly rectify we will see i don't have to write to rectify this right we don't have to write to rectify this we have to visualize we made a mistake then how to rectify that's the next part of the story we will see how to rectify it. that's a separate issue but at least did we visualize that yes four was not the answer we made a mistake because we considered the values where one side was even and the other side was odd no both sides has to be even that is what we need to be looking for great all right i'm hoping that others also kind of understood this not just rishav keval savani shivani so others also kind of understood i believe okay all right so let me erase the complete data let me come back to this so therefore what do we mean by this so we are come kind of writing it something like this you are trying to say that man this has to be written something like x plus y you are writing it like x plus y and x minus y is equal to 24 where x plus y should be of the form 2a x plus y should be of the form 2a y 2a because x plus y is even you only said that if it is a even then it this number should be a multiple of 2 perfect there were 2 x minus y also should be even which means if this also should be multiple of 2 both sides should be multiple of 2 any even number can be written as 2n so therefore i am just writing it as 2a into 2b 2a into 2b is equal to 24 very good 2a into 2b is 24 now i will simplify this therefore a into b is equal to 6 i I'll come, simplified it i simplified it now find a solution for this now find the factors of 6 don't find the factors of 24 instead find the factors of 6 a 6 is equal to 2 power 1 into 3 power 1 factors of 6 therefore are nothing but 2 into 2 all it factors of it, this are nothing but 2 into 2, 4. And now you apply that, hey, we learned here earlier, if I want the positive integral solution, it will be always a function of factors of the number divided by 2. But which number? This number is 6, not 24. This number is 6, but not 24. And hence, I will say that there will be two solutions. Why? Out of these four factors, in two factors would be in my favor, in which x will be greater than y proposition. 2 would be in my favor, half of them will be in my favor, other half will not be in my favor. So this is the point we should do. Don't take the factors of 24. Instead, divide this 24 by 2 and divide this 24 by 4 and take the factors. Why? What is the visualization? My first number will be a multiple of 2. My second also would be a multiple of 2. Therefore, when I look at this 24, I don't take the factors of 24. I will simply divide this 24 by 4 because I can visualize in my mind my first number and second number both are multiples of 2 therefore i divide 2 into 2 which means i divide by 4 i will turn this number to 6 i will find the factors of 6 then i will make the half of that particular factor did you understand the modification of the number don't take n if n is even if n is even don't take n take n by 4 take n by 4 and then find factors of this fair enough made sense clear summary is clear summary is clear is this clear summary is clear to you don't take the factors of n take the factors of n by 4 and proceed the same way formula remains same in the sense the idea remains same total number of factors of n divided by 2 but which n i should take the n should not be your original n all right you got to modify that n. that n should become n by 4 that's what it, you should make it okay that's what it should become okay now what is the answer to the full question which means how many integral solutions quickly you answer now how many integral solutions how many integral solutions give me the value for this question what is the answer find the number of integral solutions so that x square minus y square is equal to 24. what's the answer
what would be the answer here? Good, yeah, that will be same as two times of factors of the number, no doubt, right? So therefore, factors of the number are four. Which number? Six. Six again. Six is our key number, not this, all right? Not 24. 24 by 4, we make it as 6. Then we'll say factors of 6. Factors of this are 4. Therefore, this remains two times of factors of number. Same study what we did earlier holds true. I can make all numbers positive, negative. They all of them will work. Two times the factors of the number, which is nothing but 8 in this case, 4 into 2, which is 8 in this particular case. Not only Keval and Risha, others are also able to think, or should I simulate and show? Are you able to think this? Are you able to think? All of them would work. Positive, negative, all of them would work. All of them would work. Each case can be permuted in four ways. Right? Okay. So therefore, eight. Good. All right. Quick quiz. How many are solutions to this? Look at the number and tell me how many integral values, how many positive integral solutions. What is the answer to the first question? How many positive integral solutions if x square minus y square is equal to 30? How many positive integral solutions? Think, think clearly, think clearly. What is the answer? Find the number of positive integral solutions if x square minus y square is equal to 30. Right? Zero. Why zero? Because first step, the moment it is even, I know that I have to divide this 30 by 4. The moment I divide 30 by 4, that itself is not becoming an integer, which means difference of two perfect squares is not becoming an integer. 30 by 4, I will do, I will get 7.5. 7.5 is not an integer, therefore, there is no way. So, and hence, whenever I give an even number, it should be a multiple of. Whenever I give an even number as an outcome, I said that odd and even, I said that case 1, we said x square minus 1 square, where n, n is odd. Any odd number will work any odd number would work but when i write x square minus y square is equal to e n and i tell this man this is an even number ensure that this even number is of the form 4k otherwise no solution the year 30 is not of the form 4k it is not of the form 4k and hence no solution so therefore no integral solutions also be it positive negative no integral solutions at all it should be of the form 4k but all right in the previous one we took it as a multiple of 4k so if you look at the previous slide you understand that hey, 24 was a multiple of 4k therefore there were solutions whereas in this particular case there is no solution okay all comfortable with this this 4k is clear to you for this was absurd this was absurd therefore i gave this quiz because earlier you observed it 2x into 2y 2 into 2 4 if i don't give the multiple of 4 how do, how do you get the solution you will not get the solution you won't get any solution okay that gives the clarity that should bring the clarity here okay all right now give me all three answers here one, two, three. Give me all three answers. Hmm, that's right, one. Yeah, that's right. Hmm, after this, we'll go to cat examples. Yeah. Give me all three answers. Answer to the first one. Answer to the first one. Solve all three and give by the comma separator. Comma separator. One answer, comma second answer, comma third answer. Do all three at once. Keep your pen, keep your book. Do all three at once. First, comma, second, comma, third. Give me three answers. If you don't know answer to one particular question, leave a blank. One, one, comma, blank, comma, another one. So if you want to leave a blank, leave a blank. But give me all three answers. Go ahead, all of you try solving this. This gives me the confidence that we are ready for cat questions.
Okay, let me ask a question. 225, how many factors for 225? Answer this. How many factors for 225? First answer, how many factors are there for 225? Have you found the number of factors of 225? Factors, factors of 225. Shivani, why 8? Why 8 perfect squares have odd number of factors, right? Shivani, you should get 9. Why 8 there? Right, 225 is nothing but 15 square, right? 225 is nothing but 15 square, right? 15 square is nothing but 3 power 1 into 2 power to 5 power 1 whole square. Therefore, you will say that nothing but 3 into 3, 9 factors, right? Mm. Now, there are 9 factors. Very good. Now, listen, out of these 9 factors, I can classify them into 3 areas. So, what are the 3 areas? Because you would have written this as x plus y into x minus y is equal to 225, right? Okay. So, out of which x plus y would be greater than x minus y in four cases. In four cases, x plus y would be greater than x minus y. When you write split it to write this, so what do you mean by split and write? 225 into 1 is equal to 225, like this. So this is one of these four cases. I'm talking four cases here. x plus y is greater than x minus y in four cases. Okay. Similarly, x plus y would be less than x minus y in another four cases. Say, for example, all right, dot, 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 towards the end, you also would have written this as 1 into 225. So when you write 1 into 225, x plus y now has become less than x minus y. So that is another four cases. There will be one case, always there will be one case, whenever it has odd number of factors, there will be one case in which x plus y would be equal to x minus y. There will be always only one, one such case. If which is that particular case? That particular case is 15 into 15 is equal to 225. There will be only one such case. And such one case comes only if it is a perfect square. Why? Because earlier examples when we took, we didn't take a perfect square. So if it is a perfect square, perfect square will have always odd number of factors. Any perfect square number has odd number of factors. Therefore, so there will be four cases uh, four cases in which x plus y would be greater than x minus y. There will be four cases in which x plus y would be less than x minus y. And there will be one case in which x plus y would be equal to x minus y. What I need to consider here, here you'll be considering if it is a perfect square, factors of the number minus 1 divided by 2. In this case, 9 minus 1 divided by 2, 4. Number of positive integral solutions is 4. Which is that 4? This is the 4. This is the 4 solutions which are positive integral solutions. Second one, non-negative integral solution, which is nothing but whole numbered solution. Whole numbered solution means what? This 4 plus 1 I should add. Okay, therefore you would say that hey, this would be factors of the number plus 1. You don't have to remember the formulas, etc. It comes very naturally after some time. So you just have to understand that, okay, this structure exists, something like this. This is the kind of a structure exists there. That's all you got to kind of remember, okay? So therefore 4 plus 1, 5. So and hence you say that this is 9 plus 1 divided by 2, which becomes 5. That is how you kind that kind of comes there. Hey, what about the number of integral solution? No change. This is nothing but two times of factors of the number. As usual, whatever we did, we understood that the number of factors are 9. Therefore, simply this would become 18. 9 into 2, this would simply become 18. There is no difference. Hey, why? I can make both sides and I can make both of them negative because you wrote eight, nine factors here. From top to bottom, you wrote nine factors there. Hey, out of these particular nine factors, can I make all of them negative here? This negative, this negative, this negative. Yeah, all, all, whole range, I can make it negative. Whole range, I make it negative means what? All it simply, I will get two times of the factors of the number. Comfortable, my friends. Everybody got this? Did you all get this? Clear? Did you all get this? Therefore, answer to the last question would be 18. Right? 4, 5, and 18. Clear? Everybody clear on this? 4, 5, 18 is clear? Right? Okay. All right. So that covers that covers the entire base. Three things I clearly discussed. Three things I discussed. Fourth one, we will be able to handle. That should not be a problem. What all we understood now? X square minus Y square is equal to M. Case one, we saw this as an odd number, but not a perfect square. We saw this as an even number, but not a perfect square. Another case, we saw this as an odd and a perfect square. Odd number and also which is a perfect square. The fourth case will be even number and a perfect square. Answers remain pretty similar to this, 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 and this. Only thing is we have to consider that n value as instead of n. Before we take the factors, we just have to change it to n by 4. Change it to n by 4 and then work out on the factors of this. And after that, every process remains the same. Now let's open up to some cat questions. Let's resolve some of the cat questions and we are done.
okay we are ready to take up some of the cat questions yeah this was one of the difficult cat question probably we'll complete later yeah let's take this this is better to start oh let's start this go ahead let's resolve this yeah i will put the poll i will put the timer one minute should be a good time go ahead everybody try and give me the right answer all of you take pen paper okay what happened guys many of you could not answer you had a difficulty in identifying whether this what is this double seven double four is it okay let's try it what is this double seven double four first of all what is this double seven double four double seven double four is a perfect square just in case you cannot identify this particular number so you can you would have gone by 11 at least you would have gone by 11 11 seven times then you would have written zero and then you could have written four at least you understand that this number is divisible by 11 there is a 77 here and there is a 44 there therefore you at least understand that this can be written as 11 into 704 again some of alternative numbers is divisible by 11 therefore you can take another 11 common from here another 11 common then you write this as 6 11 6 times 66 and then you have another 44 11 4 times okay therefore you understand that this given number is a perfect square what is this perfect square 11 square into 8 square that is that, that's a perfect square 88 square basically it is one of the most fancy numbers which is used in the cat double seven double four is the 88 square and there are a lot of puzzles generated shakuntla devi also created a puzzle on this it's one of the fancy numbers double seven double four is one of the fancy numbers we will see more about this when we are doing some how to find the last two digits of the number etc etc we'll speak little more about this but then yeah double seven double four is one of the fancy numbers 38 square is also another fancy number because this is the only number in which a particular digit comes three consecutive times right 38 square is one four 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 it comes something like this that's another fancy number which are used in the exam okay it's fine you don't know it's a fancy number fair enough even if you don't know it's a fancy number this is what we could have done we understand by looking at this number that okay man this is at least divisible by 11 then you go ahead and you will come to this particular stage from here you go on to resolve that okay this is 11 square and this is 2 raised to power 6 okay from there you say that okay this is 3 and this is 7 this has 21 factors but now i'm asking integers i'm just asking integers x and y satisfying therefore your answer is 21 into 2 which would become 42 straightforward this is my answer two times of the factors of the number all right two times of the factors of the number why you guys are giving a discount of something some of you said that 41 is the answer some of you marked 40 as the answer why there is a discount why there is a discount where where you are giving the discount of one number all factors are there you wrote all the factors and all factors you can write with a negative sign simple you write all 21 factors and all 21 factors can be made negative this is what we kind of observed in the previous question right in the previous question we observed this right here we observed this so look at here all it now this was also a perfect square 225 was a perfect square but we said that man it is two times of the factors of the number and suddenly the moment you saw the even number why you are discounting them so you are giving a kind of a discount here you are saying that hey it will not be this all right now i will be doing this right you are doing this discounting is this the answer is this the answer is this the answer answer is wrong perfect very good answer is wrong answer is not a all right answer is not a none of the above 
Alright, answer is technically none of the above because the moment you see an even number after you get to this particular stage, what is that you are supposed to do there? Divide this by four. Very good, Kaval. Very good. Therefore, answer was simply not a well, 11 square and then you say that 2 raised to power 6 and you first divide this by 4. Very good. Divide this by 4 and then you write this as 11 square into 2 raised to power 4. All right. From there, you realize that, okay, this number is 3. This number is 5. 5 into 3 is 15. The answer is 15 into 2. Double this particular number. Answer becomes 30. 30 is the right answer. Comfortable? Everybody clear on this? Everybody clear? No need to give discount. 15 into 3 is the answer. 30 is the correct answer. Even number first divide by 2, divide by 4 and then find the factors. And then find the factors. Comfortable? Everybody comfortable? Which is the last part, Kewal? Kewal, you got this 15 factors? Did you get these 15 factors? You got these 15 factors? Make everything negative. For example, you write this as product of two numbers, x plus y into x minus y is equal to whatever that k you wrote there right that k you wrote there so now i'm talking about these 15 factors whichever all it now these 15 factors you are talking so let me take one of the factors as this itself 11 square 121 is one of the factors the other factor is going to be 2 raised to power 4 4 4 which is nothing but 16. 121 is one of the factors right this is one of the factors so what i mean by doubling this all right what i mean by doubling this why are we doubling this simply write minus on both the sides can I write minus and minus here? Which means you would have listed all 15 factors here. All 15 can factors can be made negative. 15 into 230. Why discard? Why discard any factor? Why discard any factor here? You don't have to discard any factor. Making sense? Is this clear? All of them will have a negative sign after that, right? First, everything will have a positive sign. Then whole list will have a negative sign. 15 numbers with a positive sign and then 15 numbers with a negative sign. Therefore, 30 is the answer. Is there a clarity, friends? Is everybody following this? Should I take a smaller number and explain or did you understand this? Two times of the factors of the number. Is this clear? The 15 becoming 30 is clear to everybody. Right? But common mistake we all do is what? We don't divide by 4. N divided by 4 and then take up the questions. Risha, 15 can be odd. How does it matter? You will have the whole list of 15 numbers and then you will make all 15 numbers negative. You take all the numbers negative. Simple as simple as this. Got it. Shivani, you can generate your own numbers and practice. What big deal? Write any even number which is a multiple of four and then generate and answer. Right? Yeah. So we can do as many questions as you want, but that's not the idea. Idea is what? Okay. Write any even number which is divisible by four. And then you can start working on this. Right? You can write any even number divisible by four. Once you understand that, okay, the factors can be doubled, the game is over. Whatever the factors you get. You simply double that. But don't forget to divide by 4. This is the step people make a mistake. That's it. Right? When it comes to even number, the common mistake that it happens is they don't divide that by 4. Yeah. And then after that, the people try to give some discount also. One number less. They will double. They will make it 30. And then they will give one number less, two number less. All this. This was the previous lecture's problem. When you had 1 by x, 1 by y. That is when this came in the picture. Don't try to apply this one number less, two number less in this problem. Right. In this problem, it may not be required. Right. It may not be required. All right. Try this. Give me the quick answer on this particular question fast. Fast. Give me the answer here. Uh, to this particular question. Okay. I will give a minute.
I'm extending the poll by 30 seconds. Answer, everybody answer. Okay, good. All right. So that's time. Nice. Good. Good. This time there were good number of right answers. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what is this particular number? 75 square. Right. All of you know at least the number ending in 25. Finding the square root is very easy. You will know one or the other method to do that. So that is nothing but the 75 square. 75 square is nothing but 5 raised to power 4 into 3 raised to power 2. You will write it like this. Then you will find the factors of this particular number. You find the factors of this. The factors are therefore nothing but 5 into 3. 15 factors is what you have. But you got 15 factors. But I said that, hey, give me the ordered pairs of positive integers, which means both sides, x should be positive and y should be satisfied, y should be positive, which satisfies this particular equation. I want x and y to be positive. You plug x and y here, that is when you should be getting the right answer. That is the whole question there. We already kind of know that, okay, if I get 15 numbers here, so answer is not a very clearly the answer is not a just if you want to understand this, hey, what is the breakup of these 15 factors when I want positive, when I want the positive, I told you very clearly factors of the number minus one divided by two. If you understood the summary clearly, you would have done this. Hey, this has to be 15 minus one divided by two, which should be seven. Seven is the answer in fact. All right, 7 is the answer because out of these 15 cases, all right, our x plus y is greater than x minus y. I clearly illustrated this before. There would be 7 cases here and there would be 7 cases in which x plus y would be less than x minus y. And there will be one case, one case in which x plus y will be equal to x minus y. I kind of already illustrated this once before. It is pretty much similar question. See, otherwise the summary, this, uh, this also we kind of summarized it. We summarized it one of the previous slides, right? Yeah. So therefore positive integers, you got to look for the stimulus properly. Okay, what I did is I changed the answer options. All right, the cat question, I changed the answer option so that people may fall into the trap. Uh, correct answers were there. Don't think that every time the answer or correct answer will be none of these. No, even that answer would be printed. Correct answer will also be printed. I just tweak a little bit of answer options here and there so that we get into proper thinking. We get into proper thinking. Therefore, I made some of the answer options nota. That's it. It's not that, okay, none of these will be one of the features of the answer options. No, you got to read the question carefully. I told you non-negative integral solutions, positive integral solutions. Likewise, all right, I kept on telling you, you read question carefully. Otherwise, even after getting all the concepts, there are chances that we will end up making the mistake, right, which we should not. All right. Okay, take this particular question. Maybe we'll solve this particular question in the next class. All right, take this and take this as a homework. Take this one as a homework. We will solve it in the, not this particular class. You do it probably when we do the next algebra question, we'll do. This was one of the level two cat questions on this concept. So if you ask me, how do you categorize the other questions? How do you categorize? I'll categorize this as level one. All these are level one questions. Some factor understanding is required. The study should be clear. Once the study is clear, it is a level one question. For the fellows who have not studied, it is always level two, level three question. We'll never speak from the unprepared person perspective, a prepared person. When somebody is prepared, aware of the concept, this becomes the level one question. It is always with what perspective we are speaking, right? We can always say that hey, other fellows are not solving, therefore it is not level one. We don't think from that perspective. Always your computation starts at 90 percentile. So you need to always classify from 90 percentile perspective. Don't classify the questions from 75 percentile perspective. A lot of people classify the things from 75 percentile perspective. How does it make sense? It doesn't make sense. The game begins at 90 percentile because that is the lot the, which throws us the competition. Between 90 and 95, navigating is tough because they will not lose their position. Crossing over somebody who is getting 75 because it's a relative competition. You should be one step ahead of others. The fellows between 95 and 100 will not let you to cross them because they are also putting the equal amount of effort. It's easy to cross somebody getting 75, 80, 85. You can easily cross, right? But crossing the fellows after 95 is a challenge. I would rather say that 90 onwards. I always classify the question from 90 percentile perspective because the game begins there. That's the beginning of the game. Others is not at all a beginning of the game, right? Yeah. 
that's the point there so therefore all others questions what we did are level one except that one question which i gave it as a homework is the level two we will see how that becomes a level two all right in the next lecture next lecture in the sense you do it all right you can post it in the telegram group as well so we will meet right after 10 15 minutes 10 or 10 or 15 minutes we'll meet again but we'll start a new new topic we'll start a new topic we'll start a new topic what is the topic or let we kind of start on the topic on so i think you got got that sequences and series i will not do progressions ap gp hp we all know i, will, I don't talk about that particular part as this is generally done as a study under the progression but it is done under the sequences and series hey it's not number series letter series sir i will write one year three year six year ten year therefore what is the next number that's stupidity that won't come in the care that's not the idea it is not this series only the moment i say series some people think that oh this is what we do no this is a part of some logic study which comes in nmat or snap kind of exam this will never come in a cat kind of study i am ahmedabad is not interested in 136 10. so always think that when cat paper is set it is set to select students from i am abc for them it is set i am ahmedabad students will you ask the question 136 10 definitely not you will not ask such stupid questions to i am ahmedabad students so it is done from paper is designed from them other b schools also take a score is a different issue but you don't ask 13610 therefore what is the next number to an I'm a, I am the bad student it is inherent understood that you know therefore what that is where the game begins that is the sequence and series from algebra is where we are going to start in next couple of minutes maybe 15 minutes 8 to 7 15 we'll start and we'll kind of close it by 8 15 that's what we do if you liked it before you put it on so take about two three minutes and press the like button or let know whatever the some feedback something it might ask give that particular feedback and proceed from there and then share it share this link if you want to share it with others etc do all of that yeah these are some of the educators who are launched launched the batch yesterday you want to take a look at this you can take a look at this particular batches and if you are if you are on the plus platform already you will have this access you can just look at their video small video would have been presented as to what they are covering in those particular lectures you can take a look at that right this weekend don't miss this opportunity there is a mega combat which is happening so don't miss this because 500 is a good number you can always be a part of 500 to avail student scholarships fair enough i will end the class here hmm. yeah thanks cable thanks all right okay all right let's take a quick 10 minutes break and regroup take 10 minutes break and then refresh your mind a little bit would like to have some tea coffee water in between have and stretch your back a little bit and then let's come back at about 7.15 in about 10 minutes time. Bye till then, see you again quickly. <laughs>